We are live. Hey. We are here. I have notes. Awesome. I don't know why I'm showing you that. They were just in my hands and I started waiting. I just love that you print out notes. That's great. Yeah, and I, just I highlight have... things. Yeah. That's God bless you. Like <laughs> I just <laughs> I, if anyone saw my screen, they would just see a bunch of tabs open right now. <laughs> no, uh, I hey everyone. Up, I even folded them so that they would be all nice. Oh, that's so nice. Know. Uh I'm Carlos Luna. This is Victoria Rogers. Hi. Uh this is Learning Roll 20. Uh, we're going to be going over today's episode. What is our today today's episode? It's uh, the toolbar, toolbar? To and pages, pages and layers and layers. Yes, we're going to be going over all those. Uh, we are going over the toolbar. We will not go over dynamic lighting. That's we're saving that for an entire episode by itself. Uh, so you will see that later. Um, what else? Yeah, let's jump right in. There's a lot to cover uh, in this one. Uh, oh, I should say that this is an hour long Twitch stream. If you are watching this in the future on YouTube, uh, this is an hour long. So I don't know if you want to spend the entire hour with us, but we will be answering questions in the chat as well. Um, but yeah, we're going to try to be as uh, concise as possible. All Ooh. right. Well, in that, then I guess we get started. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do the thing. All right. So yeah, where do you want to start? Do you want to start with the toolbar? Or do you want to start with... Uh, Pages. Oh, also in the chat, if you guys have questions, uh, uh, go ahead. <laughs> I just bet Jack's not funny in the chat. I know, uh, so did what, I. <laughs> what, yeah, I'm not getting, he's, he's not going to throw me off today. Uh, if you guys have questions, go ahead and uh, ask them in the chat. Just put question at the front of your question so uh, we can easily pick them out. But yeah, take it away, Victoria. Okay. So we, uh, well, let's start with pages. Why don't we? Okay, cool. Let's 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 do pages because layers yeah. fall under the toolbar. So let's Okay, yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when you are the GM, you have access to the pages and you access the page toolbar by clicking on that blue little page. And yeah. Oh, look at there. We got all yeah. these. I yeah, and the thing with the like with the charms. The wait, 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 oh, like lucky charms. The thing with the pages uh, section, that little tab, uh, like people think of them different different ways, right? Um, sometimes people think of them as like the maps area because a lot of people keep maps on there, uh, or the board area. I like to think of it as as a board. Um, I always think of that Seinfeld episode where they're playing Risk and they have that board that they're carrying around everywhere. Like that risk board would be one page in this section uh, mm -hmm. because you could have several different parts of your game going on at one time. Um, the page is kind of like having um, like exactly that, like a table, right? It's mm -hmm. a setup table for you. So on this table, you have this uh, this map and these tokens and on a, um, you know, another table, you have something else. So that's how I kind of look at the pages section. Mm hmm. I'm I'm of the map camp. Yeah. But either or is fine. Um so these are your pages. So as a GM, you might have a board or a map or something that's not a map at all. You could just have a picture to give atmosphere, um, if that's what you wanted. Um and, but here we go. Here's one of the maps. Let's say this is a map that you want your players to see. You have them on the started, the, the started, that you have, <laughs> there's the starting Sorry. page and um, you just drag them over. You click on this banner where it says players and you drag it over to the map. And now your players will see this map. Yes. The players, uh, the players in your game will have this view of this map. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not necessarily mean that you know, their tokens will be there or, you know, they'll be able to see everything because you could have dynamic lighting. You could, you know, move other stuff different places. Uh, this just means that uh, of all the sections that you've blocked out for them, uh, this is the one thing that they're looking that they're all looking at at the same time. They're looking at this page. So they're all seeing the same thing. Once you move that ribbon, that banner from one place to another. Do you call it a banner or a ribbon? Um, I call it a banner. Yeah, I think it it is the banner, but I think in my head I've always called it the ribbon. Mm, it's like a book ribbon. I can see that. Yeah. 
I call it the banner know. because I think of like a standard in fantasy. Like oh, like the banner. I didn't even think about that. That yeah, because that's what it looks like to me. It looks like it should be on a great big pole and be walking around with. Oh God, that's so funny how people <laughs> think completely different things. Because I just imagined that ribbon that I never won. <laughs> like, oh. I, just, I just no, not really, but really, like send me some <laughs> ribbons, guys. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll get you a ribbon. Yeah, Carlos, yeah. one roll twenty. <laughs> one roll twenty achievement. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So you just move the banner slash ribbon around, um, and that will tell people where. Well, it will show everyone so even though i'm on this map even but i have moved the players over to the fandolin map the players will now see the fandolin map that will be what's on their screen even though it's not on my screen and i saw your question crocus maximus um so layers are Ooh, something yeah. different um which yeah. we will crocus, be going into yeah crocus maximus maximus asks so what is the difference between pages and layers. I always hear GMs talking about the token layer, map layer, or they just uh, or they just calling what you call uh, pages layers. Um, that's a really good question. Uh, the yeah, we're gonna go over that later. It, basically, they are separate. Mm -hmm. Basically, think of um, each page uh, being a series of layers. So um, mm -hmm. a page by itself is the big piece, and inside on each page there are a map layer, a token layer a GM layer, a dynamic lighting layer, and they all go into one page. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, So one thing that's fun about this, and to be honest, I'm gonna be really honest here. I just learned this and I'm thrilled. This this is exciting. So the, let's uh, say- The drag and drop? The, yeah. Yeah. That Miles, is so great. Miles from our XP team, uh, Miles, I don't, I don't know if you're in the chat right now, but I'm giving a shout out to Miles. Uh, he does a lot of hard work. That was the first tip uh, that he said, hey guys, you should say this. You should say this in, in chat because a lot of people don't know. And you didn't know, I, I've seen it done, but I couldn't, I, I, I'd never done it, oh. to be honest. Yeah. I, I, knew, I, I knew it existed. I just have never done it before. Oh, I'm, I'm thrilled by it. So what you do is, oh, you're not going to be able, so at the bottom, let me just change something on OBS so you can see this. This will be a little wonky, everyone. Just give me, there you go. So see on the bottom here where it says the, the nameplate of, so you'll have all your players here and there will be a nameplate here. What you do is you just grab onto this and then drag it to the map you want that person to see. To the page. Yeah, to sorry, the, the page. Yeah, yeah, you use maps though, but that's a good point, right? Like you use, like that's why it could be confusing because like some people use like maps. I use boards and you use maps, but it's actually called pages. It's so funny that like we all have different names for it. Yeah, uh, they're pages. Yeah, like, yeah. But you just drag it to the page that you want. Like we're getting a network error. Oh, um, it's showing up on my part okay. on Twitch. Then so never mind. I'm just getting yeah. a network error. All right. Um, yeah. So they're pages. So you just drag and drop. So let's say the party has decided to split up. Yeah. Whether that's a good idea or not, um, you can do that. So you can change it so that this person is seeing this page when everyone else is seeing the Vandalin page. And then you can move this person around to whatever page you want them to be, whether it be the Axe Home or but Butter Skull or wherever it is, happens to be, you can move them to that page. Now, in order to put them back into the regular where with the rest of the party you have to then drag their little icon and not put it in the page if you put it in the page they'll still be separate but if you put it on the players banner where you can see it's highlighted in yellow poof they're back with the party yep that's an awesome tip uh God. because you don't think like, oh, I can split my party or like, how do I run this? And granted, like, that's hard. 
Like that's going to be a hard, you know what I mean? Like you're going to be flipping back and forth between pages, but at least you can give that experience, right? Like if the party splits and the party goes somewhere, you can be bouncing back and forth if you really want it to, mm -hmm. um, like in the game. Which and yeah, that's an, an awesome tip. little dimension. I yeah, think. I love it. And then, oh, oh, this is where I get excited. <laughs> okay. Okay. So... <laughs> You're splitting them up into a different page. Now, we're, we'll, we're going to go over this at, in a different episode. But what I love about it is it creates like they see a different page, but you can create playlists and d various playlists and link those playlists to different pages. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So Hold on. How, some, do you... how do you do that? So wait, you make a how do you attach a playlist to a page? Oh, very, you attach a very playlist easy. To a yeah, point? you can, you can, so you go to the settings, so page settings. I've, I really, I literally have never heard of this before. And at the very bottom of the page settings, see how there's no play on load. You choose which playlist you have created that you have. And so whenever this page is loaded, that oh, playlist starts. I had no starts. idea that's what that meant. I had no idea what, oh, what that Oh, it's one meant. of my favorite features. Play on low. I use it constantly. Um, so that way you can you can build your different playlists that create an atmosphere and a dynamic yeah. for, for situations. So you can have your players, if their party splits, listening to two separate um, playlists oh. and getting their own very different experiences. Yeah, that's really cool. I never mm -hmm. knew that. Yeah. Yeah, I just assumed that all the music stuff would happen in the playlist tab, but I guess like this is the page setting, so you would want to facilitate your page settings for this yeah. tab. So that makes sense too. That's now, awesome. Now, the rest, uh, most of this stuff in here um, in the page settings is to do with Fog War dynamic lighting, um, which again, we are going to be doing um, yeah. a, a whole thing because this current Fog of War setup is legacy. Um, yes. and new things are rolling it's, out. Yeah, new the new dynamic lighting, which is in the opposite tab uh, up above, which we're not going to go over today, is uh, that will be the new, uh, the updated way of how you handle Fog of War or advanced Fog of War dynamic lighting, mm -hmm. which you see in this tab right now. Yep. Uh, currently, that's legacy that will be phased out in the future. Um, but right now, the two systems are running parallel. I don't know for how much longer, um, I want to say some, they've got time, like you've got time to run both of them for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you're new to roll 20 and you just started using it, that might be a little confusing. You might be like, well, I don't understand what's the difference. Difference is like, if you're getting started on roll 20 now, start using the updated dynamic lighting. Uh, if you have games, continue doing whatever you want. Maybe check out the new dynamic lighting. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, something in the setting that isn't to do with dynamic lighting um, is just even simple of the background color. Some people like a black background. Dark mode. Um, I like or, a beige. I like, like a nice, a nice beige. A nice, okay, we'll change yeah. it to a nice beige for you. Yeah. A nice yellowy parchment color. Yeah, that's what um, I like. Yeah, you can change the color of your backgrounds. So if you want, like I'll often do it where I don't have a map per se, because this is an RP session. So I'll hmm. build a page with just an atmospheric image. So I want hmm. the background color to kind of match that image color. So that's yeah. when I use that generally. Um, page size, I don't really fiddle with that. But if so you- So I do. Take, do you? I do. Well, only because, okay, so similarly, like, um, yeah, sometimes I'll, I'll throw like a scene in the background, you know, like, oh, you guys are, you know, here where they don't they're not don't have to be tactical about it. They don't have to know. But if you're doing if you're building like a map, uh, like a tile map, um, those are really important to like set those sizes. Uh, yeah. I can show you some tips real quick. Do you have, yeah, do yeah, you yeah. Hear a, yeah. So uh, do a search for um, what's this guy's name? Uh, the Luca side quest maps those are some of my favorite ones uh search side quest maps in the art section um this is so setting up a map we get asked like how do you set up a map well like it, it's it could be as easy as dragging and dropping um and it could be as like 
complicated as setting up like individual tiles, right? Like you can, you want to build like a sewer map. So you're setting up a tile here, a tile there, but it might not like be lining up right for you. Um, this will help you. I, I'll, I could like kind of break down what's going on in these things. So mo most of the people, uh, side quest one word, sorry. Um, oh. So most of our creators on the marketplace will uh, set up a map with the grid in mind. Uh, with you having to use the grid or the grid being set up. Uh, the squares are usually around 70 pixels. And um, uh, um, you, you can set those, you can set the grid to how many feet, if it's five feet per, per square or whatever. Um, hmm. Try, uh, do, 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 try dark chambers. Dark try that. chambers. Yeah. <laughs> It sounds like a metal band. <laughs> it does. Um, yeah, so you're you're going to get um, yeah, and it might take a while too. It'll show up in that middle section. Um, the reason it's taking uh, Victoria's uh, so long is because you have an open account, which allows you have access to yes, like, just about I everything have access that we have. to absolutely everything on World yeah. Money. which feels like as a collect. I'm a collector. I'm the type of person who likes collecting things. It just feels good. Like, it I, does I just feel yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, like, I have the power. Right? Like, it feels good. I don't you know. know. I don't know what man. it is. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, if we look at these, um, so if we look at these on the right hand side, you can see the number on the right is the mm -hmm. size of the map that the map needs to be. Um, so, do me a favor and just drag one out there. Just okay. drag one of those 14 by 19. I will out there. create a new page. Oh, that's good. Yeah, don't mess up your, your game. <laughs> oh, and did you see how easy that was? I just clicked on new page. Oh, yeah. New page on the left. And then and I scrolled make... all the way down. <laughs> and I and got... it's kind of like making an, you're calling up a new table, right? Mm -hmm. A new table where you can put down a map, where you can put down tokens, where you can put down dynamic lighting. Um, and that's basically what you're doing there. So, uh, so right now we have the made a new page. It is the default sizes. We want to get, we want to start building a tile map on there. Mm -hmm. um, so you dropped it on the map, right? Yeah, and it I'll filled drop the it space the of, of, no, 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 just leave it there uh, for like a second. Mm -hmm. it, it, spilled the, it filled the space of like one little square. Mm -hmm. And you're going to do this, anyone who's in the chat, you're going to do this if you're a new player. And you're going to be like, well, that's not the size that I want it, obviously. <laughs> like, how do you get the size that you want? Um, one way is uh, you can uh, grab it by the corners and, you know, make it bigger that way. Uh, or this is the cool way to do it. Oh, oh. Uh, right click cool. on it. Yeah. So you're trying to figure it out. You, you, I mean, from context clues, you can look at it and be like, okay, well, this is 14 by 19. They probably mean it needs to be 14 squares by 19 squares uh, on the grid. Uh, the other way is if you go to advanced, if you right click on it and you go to advanced, um, there's going to be delay. So let me know. Uh, I'm, I'm in advanced. It. Okay. Uh, set dimensions. Do you see that? Yep. Do you see dimensions in there? Click on that guy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. So this should be 14 so, by 19? Uh, so first it'll give you pixels. You don't want pixels, right? Did it oh, give you goodness. pixels as examples? Mm -hmm. Go to units. Yep. And then put it in. Set. Oh, look at there. Beautiful. And like, that's the easy way to do it. Like, I know- like, I wanna finish so, this. So what, <laughs> exactly, right? So what, what you can do is um uh and let's say you didn't know the size it'll actually tell you the size when you do that like we, you you click set dimensions and it'll say also if you drag it while holding alt um it'll be a little bit bigger so it makes it a little bit more manageable but like the reason it, it goes in that i don't know the specific reason but i take it as like we they don't want to cover up your entire game if it's too big for you um mm. so that's one of the main reasons that's um, so pretty yeah, and it'll just like snap to grid and you can start working on it from there. Um, one of the things that I like to do is I like to make a big layout um, and just start dragging the tiles and setting them. And that way I could just have a big list of them and then I could just copy and paste. 
uh, copy paste, copy paste. Um, the pieces, instead of dragging it out over and over again and setting mm -hmm. the sizes, I already have the sizes set for me. Um, and then when it's all said and done, if you want to reset the si the dimensions of your page in those page settings that you showed earlier, um, just know that it, I think it moves from down to up and from right to left. So if you put your artwork in the top left-hand corner, it'll be safe. Um, because it's going to move like this way up when okay. it if it starts cutting or it's going to move this way yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay so, yeah those those are my two big ones for uh for for this you had the drag and drop people uh i had uh set your artwork well i think i'm now going to be set your artwork per person i was always a drag and drop and then i would just like go to the corner and make it bigger and be like ah good enough yep this is much nicer. me too <laughs> I was always like, I, I would always be like, oh my God, 14, 19, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing that every single time. And and someone's like, hey, dummy, uh, <laughs> didn't you know you can right click it? I was like, oh, I guess that makes sense. I'm like, yeah, huh. you're not a dummy for that. Yeah, I know. But you're like, so it also makes. I didn't, also, I'm not a dummy. Yeah. But it also makes sense from a, from a like, in my head, I'm like, well, why wouldn't they just let me drag and drop it? And then someone's like, well, what if you covered your entire artwork and you can't see something? And then what if your artboard is too small? And now, you know, you're constantly zooming in and zooming out. Like the, mm -hmm. I've taken it as, and I don't even know if this is officially why they did that, but like, I just take it as like, it's more manageable this way. Like mm -hmm. the other way, it's not manageable at all. And I'm like, oh, I guess you're right. It really isn't that manageable. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Yeah. Do we have another question? Will the newer dynamic lighting in Fog of War be better than the last new versions they put out and really slowed systems down and moving around the maps was just horrible? <laughs> um, yeah, so the I don't know exactly which ones you're talking about. Um, dynamic lighting now encompasses Fog of War, advanced Fog of War. It's all encompassed under updated dynamic lighting. Um, after it's been after the legacy goes away, it'll just be dynamic lighting. So all those features, previously all those features were built. Um, historically, I believe they were all built individually. Um, and this one was built with the idea that they're all working together all at the same time. So it has increased speed wise. Uh, and th like the fixes that Dev is putting out constantly is always like increasing like playability. Um, you know, and it does like it depending on how difficult your uh, dynamic lighting is set up. Like I know some people set up their dynamic lighting with circles which puts a, like, you don't think about it, but like a circle has a million points all around it, right? Uh, we ask that you use like some type of like hexagon or something like that. Um, but yeah, like any of those, like circles definitely s slow down games for sure. Um, and obviously other people's speeds, uh, how big the map is. Like I know uh, Dungeon of the Mad Mage was like so hard to play um, unless you had like really good connection and like, a really good computer but now a lot of that stuff is like it's really good and it's only gonna get better um yeah okay yeah. so he actually yeah they actually say it was a year ago and they were running uh mad mage and moving around the maps was so bad yes uh i agree it was bad um and that's why they really went to work on this updated dynamic lighting and mm -hmm. it's pretty awesome I, I would try i would try out uh, mad mage again and see see if it works for you um yeah and you can, if you are the type of person, I just realized now that when I click on a drop down menu, it doesn't capture the drop down on OBS, um, the software that it oh, uses really? to stream this to you. No, it doesn't. Um, so I. So that I, I've heard of issues with OBS and hardware acceleration in Chrome. Um, mm. I don't know. I've never personally had it, but we might be experiencing. Chrome's hardware acceleration because um, no, I have Roll that 20. turned off. I thought you have I, it turned isn't off. Isn't there an option that you can turn it off because there, there is, is a an option? Yeah, there and I turned an option, it off because but Roll Twenty looks really stuttery when it's turned off. Oh, so maybe it didn't I look don't. stuttery oh. here. Um, I don't know. I don't know. This is yeah. the thing. Maybe I'll use Fire. I'll use something else. Um, yeah. but for now, <laughs> for, so in this section here, you can talk about the grid. So if you don't like squares, you're more of a hex person. I'm pressing on this so you're not seeing it, but there is the option to change that to hexes. So I changed it to hex. 
OK. Um, and now we've got a hex grid on here, even though the art has um, this art has squares. But you if you prefer hexes, you can change it. Yeah. Um, you can also see the measurements. So if you want to, there's different types of measurements that you can use. And if you're, if you want your grid to be more than five feet, say you're doing a big epic battle, you can do that. You can change it to meters, kilometers, miles, inches, centimeters, whatever. Um, you can change it. And there's even a custom. So you can change it to whatever you want that suits your needs. You can also change the opacity, the opacity, 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 opacity. Hold on. You could also change the opacity. Opacity. That's opacity. what I say. Okay. Opacity. Okay, cool. Opacity. Um, yeah, you can change that. Um, all sorts of things there. Um, and that is pages. Yeah. Pages are pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a great way to like organize it. I mean, yeah. Yeah. For I, when I, because there's like the start page. I like having an evocative start page um, with mute with a playlist attached to it, <laughs> um, yeah. set to it um, so that it sets the tone. So when players first emerge, when they first come into your game, there's like, there's an image there that's, you know, got the feeling that we're going, that I'm attempting to evoke as the GM as well with music to help me do it. I love yeah. music. That's awesome. Yeah, I rarely use music anymore. I use music in like post. I don't use it like during a game. Oh, I use it um, during the game all the time. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll look into that. Um, let's hit that toolbar. Let's okay, that. let's look at the toolbar. So yeah. the first one is your arrow. This is going to be the one that you're probably going to use the most. Um, yeah. It's so your select and move. So I will bring us all over to token. I don't know why I changed the players. It's not like there's any players. The play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is the select move token. It's your basic one. It's what you're going to use to pick up and grab things and move them around. It's also the tool that if you want to move a whole bunch of tokens or whatever all at the same time, you can drag and drop to select. And just move around. Um, did you know? Let me let me give you this. Did you know you can make waypoints when you move your character? So you know you know how you can make waypoints with the ruler and mm -hmm. like click here, make a left, make a right. Do the same thing with a token. So like use your right mouse button. So like hold down the token with your left and like move it five feet. Hit the right button, then move it up. Hit the right button, then move it up in another way. Um, it'll make a waypoint and tell you like the direction that everything moved in. Um, yeah. And then click on that, click on that token and hit, I think it's X. That's and pretty it, nice. I didn't actually yeah. know that. So you can do that with other people's stuff too, like other people's tokens. So if you want to see what move so-and-so did in game, uh, if they use the waypoints or if they just went from one place to another, it'll show that history. Even when you like close that game and come back to it later, it'll still show that history. I was like, uh, this is awesome. Yeah, that is great. Um, That's great for when like there's pools of water or pillars or what have you in the way and you need to yeah, figure out how to get there. Yeah, so that's this. It works for tokens and it works for the ruler. Can you uh, move the screen over so they can see the toolbar? You might have to go into OBS to do oh, it. Yeah, I do. Um, I wanted yeah, them like to it, see the search bar before. They, uh, <laughs> they, yeah, the, that waypoint is awesome. So if you want to do waypoints, uh, I, it's the right, the right button, or I should look it up. I forgot what it is. It's the right button uh, on the. It's the right button on, on a mouse, but on the keyboard, it might be like mm. W or M. I'm not sure which one it is. Uh, it's not M because M. It's not N? Oh, N. I thought you said M because M is I said for layers. M. Okay. Then it's probably, let me see, ruler. It's Q, actually. Right button or Q. Uh, thank you, source. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, the Q for the waypoints is awesome. Um, yeah, so let's go to the next one. Okay, so pan view. You're panning, but there isn't really anything to pan right here. So 
so. Yeah. So panning would be like, if you want to move around the, the tabletop, uh, you can now do that with left click. Uh, you can change, you can change that setting though, uh, in your, um, page settings, right? In the, if you click that gear icon in your page, don't, you don't have to click it here. You already, already resize it so many times. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to make you, but there is an option to go to make your, uh, your left click be panning or make, uh, uh, what is it? No, not your left click, plan. your, uh, your wheel, sorry, your wheel, right? What is it? It's the difference between zoom and pan in the, in the settings. You can choose which one you want to do. Um, I'm not those seeing are awesome. that here, to be honest. It's not in page settings. It's the actual settings of the game. Oh. Uh, the, with the gear icon. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, it's yes, not yes, in a specific yes. page setting. Beginning. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Um, that's really cool, too. So you always have that option. I know a lot of people switch back and forth between the select move button and the pan button. You don't have to. If you have a mouse, you don't have to. Uh, your right will always be it. Yeah. Uh, pan is right click. Hold to drag zoom allows the mouse wheel uh, to go in and out. Yes, correct. That's that's what it is. I didn't have it in front of me. Um, yeah, yeah, a lot of those things just become like second nature after a while. But um, yeah, what's the next one? Next one is layers. Awesome. Yes, and this is the one you're very passionate about. I am very passionate about. Uh, I am. Uh, I'm a content creator. I am constantly in the Adobe suite, uh, whether it's Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, Premiere, After Effects. So layers plays a big part of my life. Um, yeah. So layers. People are asking, like, okay, I don't quite understand what's happening or where I'm putting things, or how come I can't. Like sometimes you're like, how come I can't touch this token? I know I put it there. Why can't I pick it up? Layers very simply are like the best way I can think of explaining it is like um, like a hamburger where there's something on, like bread on the bottom, then we got some meat, then we got some cheese, then we got some more bread on top. Uh, or you can think of it like building a house, like um, you know the bottom layer is the map, right? I'll put the map on the bottom layer. That's where it's going to go, and we give it its own layer because. Uh, we don't want you to ex accidentally move it, right? You're going to be swiping and moving tokens and stuff like that all the time. And imagine if you had to swipe um, on a token and a map at the same time, like you would just be moving stuff constantly. Mm -hmm. So we give you the map in the background by itself. When you have something that you know isn't going to move that often, uh, it's a good idea to put it on that map layer and then you don't have to bother with it very often. Or yeah, it's ever. like a map or pieces of furniture or you know things like that that you've built that people yeah. are going to you know be moving their tokens around, but you don't yes. want that those things particularly to be moved around. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you want it to be like static on the board. Uh, not to say that you can't move it because you always have access to moving anything on any of those layers. Um, but you know, at the beginning of your game, when you're setting up your game, start with the map layer, start with something that, you know, you want to have in place and they do not have to move. And, you know, you don't want to bother with ever, ever again. Mm -hmm. Um, the second layer is the objects and tokens layer. So you built your house, right? We built this house, uh, or we have this plot of land. And now we're just going to start putting furniture into it. So you can start putting your objects, you can start putting your players, your characters, Things that you want to be able to move around the board uh, easily simply by like highlighting a bunch of stuff and moving. Maybe you want to move a group of things at one time. Um, this is where a lot of your gameplay is going to be taking place. Um, your players will be using this layer. Um, this is the, the, the player's layer, basically. Um, so their tokens will be on this layer. Um, and again, you can move anything to any layer. Right. There is no you can move this. Roll 20 doesn't know if your artwork is a chair, a person, a map. Uh, they don't know what artwork you're putting on the VTT. So you get to decide that. Um, and I know starting out, that could be a little bit not uh, not dif difficult, but you might not understand what's happening if you're just starting out. 
you might be thinking like, oh, it's my map. Obviously it's on the bottom. It's like, no, if you set up the map yourself, you could have set it up on anything. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what you set it up on. Uh, so like clicking through those is, um, is very important. The next one is the GM overlay, right? And that sounds scary. Like, what does that even mean? Like GM overlay. I like to think of this as a ghost layer. So if I built a house, right? I built a house. I put stuff in my house. So I built my house. That's my map in my background. I put stuff in my house. That is my, my sofa, my bed, my artwork, all that. I have this GM overlay over uh, overlay that only God sees. Cause like, that's where the ghosts live. Uh, these are, <laughs> these are things that like, you don't want your players to see that you have hidden from your, from your players. Um, you can change the uh, opacity to it. Am I saying that right? Opacity? Yeah. Uh, opacity? Uh, you can change the opacity to it so you kind of see through it like a ghost, right? Mm -hmm. It's definitely a ghost because only God can see it. Your players can't see it yet until you put it on a map layer or an objects layer. Um, and then the last one is the dynamic lighting layer. If you are a Plus or Pro subscriber, you have access to the dynamic lighting layer. So we have our house, map and background layer. We have our furniture, objects and tokens layer. We added some ghosts in there with this GM overlay layer, right? Uh, and then we want to put track lighting in the ceiling. We want to put track lighting in the ceiling, so we put it in the dynamic lighting layer. Um, and this layer, we don't put tokens. We don't put, and you can, you could if you wanted to, but like we don't do that. What we put in this layer instead is uh, like drawings, uh, hexagons that represent. Um, walls or uh, furniture or stuff like that. Um, and there are, yes, uh, keyboard, advanced keyboard shortcuts. Yes, Victoria there has are. all that. You have the printout for all I those. do. I have the <laughs> highlighted ones because I don't, I, I would, don't generally. I would not rob you. I would not rob you of your freshly printed out uh, pages. That is They're definitely not freshly you. printed out. I printed these out a while ago in preparation. Okay. 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 <laughs> Let, let's hear it. Let's, let's hear it. Let's okay. hear these printouts. Okay. So um, for your map layer, I do want to also suggest, because um, I know one thing that I have done personally, and I know other people, they forget which map layer they're on, and then they go to do something and they can't do something. Well, there is a visual cue. If you look at the icon right here on the toolbar, it will change to the icon of the layer that you're on. So right now there's the little eye. So the eye is for the GM info overlay. If you switch it to the maps in the backgrounds, oh look, the icon changed in the taskbar to tell you that you're in the map and background. So that's why you're not able to move those cobalt tokens. Um, it's because you're not in the object and tokens layer. So it's just a quick visual cue that you can just glance. Oh, which layer am I on? Oh, I'm on this layer. Um, that's a little trick that actually, I'm embarrassed to say that it took me a lot longer to notice that. And once oh. I did notice that, I went, yeah. that is such a lovely little design choice. Thank you. I want the border to change. That's my want. I want the mm. border of the entire thing to change to let me know. Like a but... color coding? Yeah, like something like, Green when we're on tokens, like give me red when when I'm on the GM overlay. So like I know I'm in like a danger area or something. I don't know. I, I don't know what it is, but I like color coding things. I'm very big on that. Uh, color coding, I you should anyway. I can talk all about color coding, yeah, yeah, yeah. especially. <laughs> um, but that's not what we're here for. <laughs> um, but Control plus M if you're on a PC or command plus M on a Mac, uh, will bring you automatically to the map background. So control plus M. Okay, now I'm on the map background. And I can tell not only did the little icon change, but also this token that I have here is now the opacity, opacity, however, tomato, tomato, um, has gone up on that or down, I guess. It's gone down. Um, and then it is control plus O to bring you to the objects and tokens. Um, and we can tell because A, we now have objects and tokens icon. And then also now the opacity, opacity of this token is, is full now. 
And then it is, now this is the one that does not start with the letter that the layer is named. It's not control G like you'd think for GM, it's control K. Um, and that will bring you automatically to the GM overlay. And the GM overlay, um, one of the, Carlos, you, you gave an excellent description of what it is. Um, but one, an example that I really like of what you might use that for is like traps. Because you don't want oh. your players to see traps. Yeah. But you as the GM want to see those traps just to make sure. Um, and then you can switch that trap token if you want once they've discovered the trap, whether it's by searching or by stumbling upon it. You can then move objects between layers. Uh, yeah. And that is That's... using control shift. So you just. And these are. These are hotkeys. I just dropped the link in the chat as well. Oh, great. Uh, I'll, when this goes on YouTube, I'll make sure that they put this in the description um, as well. These are hotkeys that will work right out of the box. Uh, there are advanced keyboard shortcuts that I'll also put in the chat as well. We're not going to go over them today. They, you, it, it requires you turning on, flipping a switch on the back end and then, you know, uh, using these. These are these will prevent you from having to hit like control shift M. Uh, now you just have to press M, right? Mm -hmm. So like when the advanced keyboard shortcuts are turned on, uh, you don't have to hit all these modifiers, but we're not gonna go over those today. Uh, I'll, I'll put the link in the chat um, and I'll put it in the description notes on YouTube, but uh, those are also there. Yeah. So moving objects between layers is the exact same thing as switching between layers, only it is control shift plus M, control shift plus O, control shift plus K um, to do that. So once they've discovered that hidden doorway, you can then switch it from the GM overlay to the objects and tokens overlay or the map overlay, map background overlay, if that's yeah. where you prefer it. Yeah, and if you look at and if you look at these shortcuts, I know we're just saying like, oh, press O, press K, press M. Um, I, I know those are just like letters, but when we look at the actual keyboard, if you look down on your keyboard right now, you will see O, K, and M uh, all in a row. Mm -hmm. So that's an easy way to remember like, oh, okay, like objects and tokens, hit O. Um, you know, I think the map, what's the map layer? The map layer M? M? Yeah, M. So like that's easy way and they're all in a row. Um, I don't think K makes any sense, but it makes sense in, in terms of uh, they're all in a row. Uh, and yeah, Casual H says, uh, another good use for the GM layer is to tuck same size maps underneath and move them to the map layer as needed to reduce the amount of map pages you need to put in the top bar. That is mm -hmm. a great tip, that is. Uh, especially uh, if you get tile sets or if you buy maps with roofs. Um, a lot of people will get these maps that have, um, you know, uh, rooftops on them, and then it'll have another one that'll take uh, the roof the roof off of it, so you can see inside. So if your players aren't ready for that, uh, you can just throw it in a different layer. You can put it underneath it, uh, or get rid of it really quick, or put it back on real quick. Uh, that's a really good tip, casually. Thank you. Okay, I think that's it for layers. Okay. But those yeah, are, I think yeah so those too. are the layers. Because we've got 13 minutes and more yeah. to do here. I don't think we're going to finish all of them, uh, no. but we'll we go through. Um, yeah, we'll just go through the next. Go to the next one. Okay. Just drawing. Drawing. Um, it yeah. is what you'd expect it to be. You can draw a shape. There's yeah. different shapes that you're not seeing this drop down. So there's thin, small, regular, extra no, we large. Are. I'm seeing it. Oh, OK, good. I'm seeing them. Yeah. All right, so yeah, you can change your shapes that you can draw. Look, there's a square. Um, oh, I'm on the GM overlay. That's why it's not showing. See, there's yeah. a square. <laughs> you wanna showcase a certain area um, or any shape. Uh, and you can freehand. Yeah. And these are, the, again, we're not gonna go into dynamic lighting, but these are the same tools that you will be using when you are setting up dynamic lighting. Um, not so much the freehand, but the polygon, uh, the polygon tool, the uh, the line. What's it called here? It's called, like the line segment tool and the polygon tool, or it's called okay. uh, draw shape and freehand. Oh, the polygon line tool. 
The polygon line tool. Yeah, that's what you'll be working with a lot uh, to set up dynamic lighting. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it'll it's like a it, it, it's a little bit different to like set it up. But yeah, yeah, that one we will go more into detail um, when we do dynamic lighting uh, text. I use a lot. Um, you just type in and here's the text. This is very small. Uh, yeah. Let's make it bigger. And it, I didn't make it bigger. Well, you can make it bigger. I just double clicked it. Oh, it's because my mouse is super sensitive. Anywho. But if you <laughs> wanted to fix this text, it says here's this text. I, I'll, I'm going to zoom in so you can see. It says here's this text. You can just, if you go to the select, you can double click and now you can change your text yeah so i want to make 100 font here's the text there it is nice and big there we go yep so can that's you, sorry can you rotate text with e with can you, I know it works with tokens. Yeah, like if you if you select something, hold down E, and then use the uh, scroll wheel, you can ro rotate yep. stuff. Does that work with text That's too? That's what I'm doing right now. Oh, awesome! I have a delay. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm doing yeah, it. Yeah, that's awesome. Rotating the text. Yeah. So if you select text or you select a token and you hold down the letter E, you can use your scroll wheel, your mouse scroll wheel, uh, to rotate it like that. Um, you know, and that way you get like the 45 degree angle or the 90 degree or the 180. Um, those are really cool. Yeah, that is fun because then you can stick it where uh, wherever you want, really. Um, and then there's the lovely clear drawings. Confirm clear. Yes. This isn't gone because we're in the GM overlay. So but we can clear it now that we're in the gym. Uh, someone had a question. Um to move something, uh, sorry, I saw someone bring it up. A uh, quick way, a quick way to make the GM layer disappear. You, mm, you would have to go into the opacity, opacity. Yeah, make opacity. Make it appear like that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, if you, if you're looking to like quickly move objects to it, you can put on. Um, you can put on advanced shortcuts and move objects to it very quickly. Um, uh, move selected objects to the GM layer using L and K. Um, but I don't know if you can, I don't think you could turn turn off the opacity on and off like that. Um, no, there's just the slider. Yeah, there's no hot button for the slider. I don't no, think. there isn't. Um, but yeah, if that's a feature that, you know, and all these are, you know, it, all these features came from people in a chat room, in a forum somewhere uh, that told Roll20 like, hey, I would really like this improvement or this feature to happen. Uh, if you really feel strongly about stuff, go to the forum and, you know, see, first see if someone's already mentioned it before. Mm -hmm. And if they have, vote it up um, because Roll20 actively looks at those forums and looks at like what people want uh, and tries to add it to them. So, yeah. Cool. Um, oh, I love this next one. I get excited. The effects. The effects. I have so the much effects. fun with these. So, and effects are only for Plus and Pro, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. But okay. they have so much fun. Um, so if you have, like, magic users or you just have explosions, um, like, and you can decide what kind. So acid, blood, charm, death, fire, frost, holy, magic, slime, smoke, water. I want a fire explosion. Oh, no. People said effects work on free. Oh, they work on free. Oh, Great. I didn't know that. Look at That's this awesome. fire. Yeah. I love this. Yeah. I have so much fun with this as the GM. As soon as someone does something cool, I am there with the effects. We're going to glow fire. See? Oh, the glow fire and have the effect on, like, when yeah. something comes up. I love it. So, yeah, you can play around with those fun facts. Missile. Let's do an acid missile. 
acid missile. There's, there's debate about whether or not they are pro and plus features. I always thought they were pro and plus, but I so could be I. completely wrong. I have not looked at at the um, the uh, thing for a while. Uh, but yeah, the effects are great. I wish they were tied to a sound effect. That'd be cool. I'm sure someone's done that API though. Yeah, you like, could. You'd have to know some coding to do that though. Yeah, for sure. Uh, oh yeah, uh, Eat the Surf says they use them. They don't pay. Cool. Okay, great. Yeah, it's free feature. Free feature, that's awesome. I never yeah. really used them until I got the the pro account. Um, yeah. So maybe I'm just associating that. Yeah, I think me too. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, you can that's also your effects. Macro. They just add some extra flair and some fun, and I love them. I use them probably too often because <laughs> I'm like, yeah. yeah. Uh, source uh, says you can also uh, you can also macro them, uh, so you can have macro buttons to showcase uh, set effects. I've never done that before. I've definitely seen people use them in other different ways. I've never put them in my own thing. I should do some research on that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I usually stay away from macros. Um, I, I I use them sometimes, but I yeah, I'm a little lazy. It's, it's not even you, honestly when you start going down that rabbit hole of macros and API stuff, like it is a rabbit hole. You'll be like, yes, I never want to, you know, like I can automate everything. Like you know, what I mean, like I can have it do anything at the push of a button. Uh, yeah, macros are life on roll twenty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's exactly, that's the mindset you get after you really get into macros. Yeah, once like, you start using them. Yeah, yeah, there are a ton of cool macros on the community page. Yes, there are. There's a lot, like people make amazing things on the community page. People make awesome APIs. Like, oh uh, yeah, I just want to spotlight more of those creators for sure. Well, maybe when we start looking into macros and stuff, we can do that. Awesome, yeah, let's do we that. We should. Yeah. Um. The next one is the magnifying glass for Zoom. Um, yeah. So you can like your zoom percentage. So if you want a more exact than using the scroll bar over here, you can do that. Yeah. And they're, they're in two places. Uh, and the people I, I've seen people ask before, like, well, why do you waste space on the, on the toolbar for that? When you have a slider on the right hand side, one, it's more exact, more exact, uh, two accessibility. Right. Mm -hmm. um, like, cause some people, the slider is really hard for them. Um, so, and you can collapse the slider too. Uh, I don't know if you, so if you click the percentage uh, above the slider, it collapses uh, to free up that. Cause if that little piece of space, you're just dying to get back. Uh, <laughs> you could just hit that slider, uh, which is so funny because like I look at, I look at that and I'm just like, wow, that is a detail I would never have thought of. But mm -hmm. enough people had, and enough people had said something that they wanted it collapse, uh, that they made it. So I was just like, good for them. Like, heck yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah. yeah. So that that's the Zoom. And then we get to our ruler. So this will tell you how far something is from here. And then again, with your right click so you can do your waypoints yeah right click or q for the waypoint yes and then x to show the path that person took so to walk all the way around the shrine there is uh 348.8 feet yeah that's awesome yeah uh, Alpha Stream, very, very nice. Uh, they had to run out, uh, but they said they are enjoying the show. Uh, and they like how uh, Carlos and Victoria work on teaching the platform. Well, thank um, you. I like that. Yeah. Thanks thank for you. joining us. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. So, and then snap to the corner instead of the center of the grid. Um, or you can just be like, no, don't snap it at all. Um, you can decide whether or not you want other people to see that you're measuring or not so that here's a question here's a question for you on that mm -hmm. the gm still sees it chat right the gm still sees that measuring even if you put it to private is that true i don't know i've never had someone try to use it privately on me or if they have i didn't know 
You Chat, let, correct. The GM will always see. Yes, I didn't know that. Uh, so I, <laughs> one day I was going like measure crazy in a game. Uh, <laughs> like the, the GM contacted me. It was like, hey, buddy, uh, uh, figure out that that spacing yet? You figure out that that uh, that <laughs> measurement? And I was just like, I was so embarrassed. <laughs> I was just like, He's trying to teach this game, uh, and it's just showing uh, on his screen. Uh, but yeah, so I was a little bit embarrassed on that one. But whatever. Just so you you know uh, that I believe see. the GM will see. Yeah, the GM sees all. <laughs> and yeah. as a GM, it's nice because if you're you know have that person who's uh, stealthed or whatnot that's sneaking up on them, you can easily measure things without your players knowing. Yeah. Uh, the next is dynamic lighting. Again, we're going to do a whole episode on this, so yeah, we're gonna skip. We, sh on. we should actually wrap it up right now. Yeah, we should. And we can we can we can finish the rest. I mean, we've gone over the dice roller. We haven't gone over uh, the turn. No. Um, the the turn. Uh, turn and, order. And I think that we could spend a little time on that yeah, next we time. Can. Um, yeah, I think that was really good. Thank you yeah. all for participating with us and like all these great. Uh, uh, tips that you guys are putting inside the chat. I love them. Uh, it helps my game. It's going to help other people's games. Uh, us just saying this will definitely help anyone who sees the VODs on, uh, you know, any of these channels. So that's great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, anything else, Victoria? You want to say no, I think we're... wave goodbye? Want to do uh, in sync wave goodbye at the same time? Okay, we can do that. Okay, cool. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Now I got to scroll all the way over here. Am I still waving? You're still waving. <laughs> <laughs>